right, let's all take a hymn book. Turn to page 346. Let's stand and we'll sing the first, second, and last verse of I Know My Name Is There. My name's in heaven, and it's there because of what Christ did. Not because of what I did, but what, what Jesus done for me. If you're glad to be in the Lord's house, say amen. amen. We're thankful, and we're blessed to see you. If you're visiting, you're an honored guest, and we're humbled that you're here, and we're thankful that you're here. If you are here for the first time, or if you've been here a few times but not yet received a visitor's card from one of our ushers, would you slip your hand up so one of our ushers will get you a visitor's card? We do appreciate our visitors. We thank God. we got some right there in front of you, Brother Carl. We appreciate them. And uh, visitors, thank you so much. If you'd be so kind to fill that card out, uh, the pen is yours to keep. Yeah, Miss Sis, good to have you back with us. Uh, you fill that card out. You can drop it off into the offering plate. And uh, the pen's yours, and uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna bother you much. We're just gonna gonna send you a thank you card, and we're glad to have a record of your visit. We do appreciate you for being in the service. You that are watching live stream, we do appreciate you as well. Uh, many have asked when the construction is gonna take place. We're already modeling this choir. All this will be tore out and redone. Uh, bathrooms behind us will be moved. Uh, they said in the middle of October. I don't think we've got a, a specific date but in the middle of October. So we will be moving our services uh, by the end of the month. We, we're hoping it, our services will be in the gym uh, in the other building. Uh, now uh, we're making some adjustments in Sunday school classes, but our, our, our services for probably for three, maybe four months will be in the gymnasium. We have the stage system out there. We have a, we have a setup out there, so a sound system, everything's out there. So I do want to go ahead and start making that announcement probably in the next few weeks. You'll come in, and, and our safety guys will say, uh, go to the gym. Amen. And uh, you say, Preacher, how, how are you going to have fellowships and stuff and meals and stuff? Well, we're going to worship. Then after that, we'll eat in there. All I know to tell you, amen, <laughs> we'll figure it out. Uh, but uh, but uh, it'll be a temporary 
thing, but uh, we're thanking God for allowing us to move forward with this to give us more room and a better look up here. We'll also be re getting new pews and, ch and choir chairs and all that stuff, so a uh, whole new makeover of our sanctuary, and we're looking forward to that. Flooring will be different. Everything will be new. So, uh, you know, we've been in this building over a little over 20 years, and uh, we're thanking God for allowing us to be able to do that. Church voted unanimously a few weeks ago to do that. Of course, uh, there's a rendering picture of it out in the vestibule uh, so you can look at it out there and see kind of what it's going to be looking like from here back uh, so uh, just wanted to make that mention so in the next few weeks be expecting to be out in the gym for, for a few weeks and uh, you know for three months four months we don't know but uh, God, God's met with us out there before amen so he's still God but I uh, do want to open the service up with prayer and it'll be well worth it amen once it's done uh, we continue to pray for brother Levon he has pet scan coming up he has a pork uh, coming up so remember him Miss Joe Carty pray for her uh, Donna Townsend Terry Jackson uh, Gerald Amelia Moore, good to see them today. Uh, J.C. Deal, uh, Donald Ravan, Todd Arduna still in the hospital. Evelyn Jones and her husband, also Chris Honeycutt, be, uh, be leaving out uh, uh, for tour. Remember that. And also Lyndon, pray for him. Tony Ballou, uh, Jeanette Phillips and her mother, uh, Lynn Fowler and uh, her mother, or Earl Gosnell, Leon Blackwell, Vivian Howard, Kathy Kerr, uh, Marie Pierce. Uh, she left a message on the phone that she'd be having some more eye surgery. Uh, Francis McSwain, Jimmy Ann McIntyre, good to see Miss Jimmy Ann today. Tasha Pruitt, Nancy Pruitt, Libby Foster, Sandy Robinson, Jane Gowan. Uh, Linda Short, good to see Miss Linda today. Uh, Sheila Atkins, uh, Preacher John Parker, Kerry Smith. Uh, also, Brother Jonathan, Brother Paul are away preaching today, so remember them. Also, Ann Mann and Bobby Mann, remember them. And Brother Tim Jett, let's continue to pray for these, that God would touch them. Cancers, bodily ailments, different things going on in their bodies. Let's pray that God would touch them, bless them, raise them up. I know that he's able. And if I missed anybody, I don't do that intentionally. If you have an unspoken need, let me know on uplift of hand. All right, let's bow for prayer this morning. Father, we do love you. And we love you because you first loved us and you gave yourself to be the propitiation for our sin and not ours only but the sin of the world. We're thankful for the privilege of prayer, the privilege to be in your house. Thank you, Lord, for each one that's gathered with us today. I pray you bless each need, each heart, each life. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to take the service and, Lord, manifest your presence in it. Father, we realize, Father, we're flesh and, Lord, the flesh can't please you. So we've got to worship you in spirit and in the truth. And we pray, Spirit of God, for Jesus' sake, that you'd manifest your presence today. If there's one here that don't know you as their Savior, we pray this would be the very hour the Spirit of God would draw them under repentance and they'd be saved. But Father, we need you today. Father, touch, touch the sick, touch the afflicted, touch those that are discouraged today, encourage those going through financial perils. We pray for them also. And Father, Lord, just bring us together in one mind and one accord today. Father, realize Him. Lord, we're all in the same boat today. We all have, we all have like passions, like temptations, like sicknesses, like, the, like problems but Lord we have a God in heaven that's able and Lord just take this service we commit it into your hands and anoint the singing the preaching every aspect of it and we'll give you the thanksgiving you deserve in Jesus name we pray amen and amen uh, quickly by way of announcements don't forget Monday tomorrow night at 6.30 is the ladies Bible study so remember that and then of course sign language class is Thursday at 6.30 uh, so Monday 6.30 ladies Bible study sign language class Thursday at 6.30 uh, visitation we didn't we didn't go yesterday. We are going to go this coming Saturday, weather permitting. So that's at 10 a.m. Then we'll get back to the first Saturday of the month after that. But I just don't want to keep postponing it. We've got to get back out there. So it'll be this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. Then don't forget November 7th, the WTBI 91.5 FM share -thon. The choir will be singing that Monday night, November 7th. I'll be preaching. So be a, please be a part of that. Also, November the 19th, we'll be having our Poor Men's Supper. Uh, there's a sign up uh, sheet in the vestibule for if you're coming and also if you want to sing so we need you to sign up if you want to be a part of that don't forget the food box out there the food for that we will put in a basket out here to the door to my right also the stuff for Kentucky in the back vestibule and then of course youth devotion at 5 30 uh, today uh, of course youth ministry when the choir comes down if you got a child uh, ages four to eight won't be part of the children's ministry they'll meet at this door with our safety guys and our teachers
and they'll be in the other building. That's where you'll pick them up at. And then, of course, if you have a child zero to three, need a nursery, you can go out this door to my left, go to the end of the hall, and, or this door to my right, and you'll walk around the hall. There's ladies back there that help take care of your child. So you use those uh, if you'd like to. All righty. Any other announcements? All right, let's all stand. Ushers are coming. Don't forget our service tonight at 6 p.m. We will be baptizing tonight. If you've been saved and not yet baptized, you can come see me. I have three or four to baptize. We'll be doing that tonight after the message. So remember that tonight. All righty. All right, let's give God what belongs to Him. The tithe is the Lord's. Brother Tim. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you again this morning. Just thankful, Lord, to be able to be here, Lord. I pray, dear Lord, you touch those ones that are sick, Lord. Bless them, Lord. I pray, dear Lord, you touch my pastor today, Lord, as he brings the word, Lord. Bless this choir as they sing, Lord. I ask you, Lord, bless this offering we're about to receive. In Jesus' sweet name I pray. Amen. Amen. Page 199, the first, second, and last verse.
I've just started living I found me a brand new life Changed my direction Washed away all my strife I'm a newborn believer It's a holy and feeling My loads are getting lighter My days are getting brighter I just started living If I had hope only In this world below I'd be covered with trouble There'd be no place to go When I met Jesus I I started believing believing. I got filled with His love Washed in His blood I just started living I just started living I found me a brand new life Changed my direction Washed away all my strife I'm a newborn believer It's a holy and filling My loads are getting lighter My days are getting brighter I just started living Now don't look at me funny You old prophet of doom I'm not one bit discouraged And I'm feeling no gloom Cause I've got the Spirit And it's totally thrilling I gave up on doubting Got no time for pouting I just started living I just started living Found me a brand new life Changed my direction Washed away all my strife I'm a newborn believer It's a holy and filling My loads are getting lighter My days are getting brighter I just started living my loads are getting lighter, my days are getting brighter. I just started living. I just started living. Stand together while the choir comes down. Let your neighbor know you're glad to see him. That song's from Uncle Larry this morning. I'm glad he's doing better. And hope you enjoyed the song. Praise the Lord.
are you weary from the battle you're fighting? Does it seem like the storm just won't break? Is there a mountain in front of you that doubt says will never move? And you wonder, will God make a way? Well, tell me a time he's not been faithful. Tell me a morning his mercies were new. Tell me a moment. faith and stand firm you can be confident the Lord keeps his promises don't doubt him just read through his word tell me a time he's not been faithful tell me a morning his mercies were new tell me a moment when he wasn't able to carry than Almighty when He could not roll back the tide. Child, when you look back, you're gonna find there was never a time. He can work miracles through the impossible. If you don't believe it, then go on and try. He's not been faithful Tell me a morning His mercies were new Tell me a moment When He wasn't able To carry you through Tell me a day He was less than almighty When He could not roll back the time Child, we you're going to find there was never a
God's children are leaving one by one, passing this way and going home. Signs of the time reveal we don't have very long. But each one who stands upon this shore, waving goodbye as they rejoice, glory to God will I'll lift my trembling voice once more. I know how I made it. I know how I made it. I made it by grace. Standing on Jordan stormy shore. I'll lift my trembling voice once more. I know how I made it. I know how I made it. I made it by God's amazing grace. Amen. you sing? You ain't got one? Your grandma get up right with you. I don't know. All right, we'll get you next time. Y'all enjoy that good singing? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's how we made it. We made it by His grace. If you get there, it'll be because of Him. Amen. I'm thankful Jesus done something for me that I couldn't do for myself. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, you say, Preacher, I, I've worked my way in. You're going to be sadly mistaken. It's not by works of righteousness which we've done, but it's, it's mercy. Thank God for grace. Thank God for mercy. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. I want you to take your Bibles with me, please, to the book of Isaiah, chapter 12. Uh, Isaiah chapter number 12. I'm not trying to uh, take a text out of context. Of course not. But I do want to preach a message from this uh, about where salvation will take you. Uh, where salvation will take you. And uh, Friday night, I, do, I want to say I appreciate all that were able to come out, to go out to the youth meeting there at Zirconia uh, to uh, support uh, Brother Jonathan. He preached a great message on hell. And uh, hell is a real place, folks. It's, it's, it's a real place. Uh, but it was created for a purpose. It was created for the devil and his angels. Uh, God is not His will that any perish, but all come to repentance. But those that reject Christ, uh, even though it's not God's will, you've chosen, you'll choose to reject Christ. In hell, you'll lift your eyes. Uh, but you don't have to go to hell. God's made a way. He's made provisions through Christ. Uh, notice Isaiah 12. Look at, I just want to read the first three verses, if God will help me this morning. I hope you've been praying. Uh, Isaiah chapter number 12. The Bible says, And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. Now may the Lord add His blessings. Let's pray quickly. Father, we do love you today. Thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word, the good singing. Thank you, Lord, for the good choir and the congregationals. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to give uh, to the work of God. And that's your will and your plan. Thank you, Lord, for every aspect of worship. And Father, we come now to the preaching of the Word of God. The most important hour of any, of any church service is the preaching of the Word. It's not because of the man that stands there, because it's your Word. It's your infallible and errant Word. And we pray, Father, that you would illuminate our mind and our heart. You'd fill us with the Spirit of God. You'd make it easy. 
Lord, please remove every hindrance, every stumbling block, every demonic spirit and force that would come against us. We pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, we ask you and we plead that precious blood that you'd give us exactly what we stand in need of today. Remove every hindrance and stumbling block. Say that near his tail and we'll give you the thanksgiving for it. In Jesus' name we pray and ask, amen and amen. Now, again, before we get to the message, I don't want to take a text and, and uh, misinterpret any. I'm pulling uh, some words out of this text to preach the thought that we give you where salvation will take you. But we understand in this portion of Scripture, we have, of course, uh, in, in the previous chapters uh, we, leading up to this, we have Israel or the converted Jews during the millennial reign. And, of course, we understand uh, that uh, as of now, Israel has, has uh, still rejecting Christ. They're not accepting Christ as their Messiah. And, of course, the judgment of God, the chastening hand of God, it's been on them all these years. As a matter of fact, we see the praise in verse number 12. The Bible says, And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though thou wast angry with me. I like what? W-A-S-T, that's past tense. He, they say, Lord, he was angry with us. And he was. God was upset with Israel because they were the apple of his eye. They were his chosen people, yet they rejected his son. And, of course, down through the years, we understand, if you study the covenants of God, the Palestinian covenant, where they are not getting to enjoy all the property in the land that's theirs because of their sin and their rejection. They're not getting to enjoy life because of sin. There's a great picture there. Uh, us as God's children saved by the grace of God, God has all these blessings for us and all the joy of the Lord that's He has that He'll bestow upon us and we are forfeiting that because we will not deal with sin in our life. And so we are not getting to enjoy everything that God has for us. I'm His child. Israel was His chosen and that nothing changed that. It was an eternal, everlasting, unconditional covenant. But yet, to God is dealing with them uh, because of their rejection. But the day comes when they'll turn to Him and now they are praising God. He was angry, uh, but that anger is turned away and thou comfortest me. That angry was in the past. Comfortest is, will be from that point and forever. So they're praising God that finally those Jews that were converted are seeing the good hand of God. So in verse 2 we see the purpose he said behold God is my salvation I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song he also is become my salvation so we have a beholding word a beholding thought God is my salvation the whole purpose of our comfort the whole purpose of our joy the whole purpose of our being is that God is as our salvation. Amen. So we see the provisions in verse number three. Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. So again, we see the context of what's going on. This is the converted Jews during the millennial reign. But yet I want to preach and use this text to make application and preach where will salvation Take you. Now, in the text, in the, in the three verses we read, that word salvation appears three times, six, setting the tone that their salvation only comes from God. Their whole rejoicing and whole reminding is this, uh, God intervened, God delivered, God rescued, God showed up, God had mercy, God extended grace, God did this and they couldn't help but praise God for His salvation. Folks, you and I look at our lives today uh, and all I can say, God delivered me and God rescued me and God intervened in my life and His good grace and His mercy and the blood of His Son is the only reason I'm standing here today with any kind of joy, any kind of peace, uh, any kind of contentment in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. But I hate to ask you to pull your phone out, but I got folks fanning in here, and uh, I'm about to fan myself. 
Amen. Some folks said, oh, it finally gets the right temperature and the preacher busts that up. <laughs> Amen. Talk to these people fanning. It's making me dizzy. I got to help them. <laughs> but anyway, the word salvation is one of the most important words in the Bible. 164 times in the Bible, it's pen. In the Old Testament, it comes from the Hebrew word, which means deliverance and victory. In the New Testament, it comes from the Greek word that means deliverance and safety or preservation. So we understand the context of salvation. We were rescued. We were delivered from the jaws of death. I'm talking about eternal death. Now, if you take time to study the doctrine of salvation in your Bible, you'll find that salvation is responsible uh, uh, for, for when you receive salvation, it's responsible, the, the whole application, the whole study, you'll find salvation moves people from one place to another. Amen. Salvation doesn't leave you where you are. Salvation always moves you to a higher plane, to a better place, to a more secure frame and state of mind of peace at heart. Now, let me give you some examples from the Word of God. It, hey, salvation brought Israel out of bondage. The Bible says in Exodus chapter number 14, verse 13, Moses said, stand still and see what? The salvation of the Lord. And when God parted the Red Sea, salvation was straight, salvation was sure, and salvation was set, and it moved them from a place of bondage to a place of freedom. What a picture. You and I was in bondage. Matter of fact, we were dead in trespasses and sin. We were in bondage to sin. We were in the slave market of sin. But God... He moved me out of bondage into liberty. He moved me out of the bondage I was in into freedom. If the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. It brought Israel out of bondage. It brought Jonah out of the well. Jonah got spit out in Jonah 2, 9. He said this, salvation is of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. But Jonah cried out to God and God touched the whale and he spit him out and he said, praise God, Jesus showed up and salvation is of the Lord. It moved him from the lowest place of his life to giving him a firm foundation. It brought David out of the pit in Psalm chapter number 40. It brought Paul out of his lost condition. Paul said it like this in 1 Timothy chapter number 1. He said, Christ came into the world to save sinners whom I am chief. It brings every sinner out of darkness. Peter said it like this in chapter 2. He said, we've been caught out of darkness into his marvelous light. So you see, you see the application, you see the example. Salvation never leaves you where you are. Salvation moves you. Salvation takes you somewhere else. Folks, that's a good sign. Again, I'm not the judge and I'm not, I'm not, sir, I'm not the searcher of hearts, but if someone claims they're saved and they're still in the same place, their lives has not changed. I didn't, I'm not talking about perfection. I'm talking about a movement. I'm talking about, hey, I once was lost, but now I see. Folks, notice that. Notice that what that blind man said when Christ healed him. You know what he said? He said, I see things different now. He, hey, his whole walk of life, his whole insight changed and it moved him differently. The same goes with salvation spiritually. You cannot be spiritually blind and get, get, then get spiritual sight and stay the same. The lame man in Acts 3, he was lame from birth. He was laying there asking alms and Jesus healed him and he leaped up. Guess where he went? He was always outside the church. Praise God, now he's leaping and running inside the church. 
His location changed. His love changed. Amen. His look even changed. Oh, is that, oh that's him. Yeah, that's him. Hey, he don't look quite the same. I guess not. Something changed him. God changed him. No way you can get saved and not be changed. Again, we're all works in progress. And we're all pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Again, we're not working for victory, working from victory. I'm not working to be saved. I'm working because I am saved. But the Spirit of God moves in. A lot of people say, Preacher, I don't know if I'm saved or not. I, I don't know. Folks, somebody big as God moves in. It's just like this little, this little girl asked her daddy. She, she was questioning. We had, little Grantley got saved after church Wednesday night, and he started asking questions. When he said, Preacher, how am I supposed to know when it's time for my child to get saved? Well, I hope you, you make out a daily prayer and God give you discernment. But when they go to asking questions, and they continue asking questions, God's doing something. It's on their heart and it's on their mind. Amen. Preach, I want my child to start asking, keep them in church. Keep praying over them. Keep them around the things of God, the Word of God, the people of God. And this little girl, she started asking her daddy questions. She said, Daddy, God created everything. Yes, sonny. And God's bigger than everything. Yes, honey. And he lives in us. Yes, honey. Well, Daddy, here's what I don't understand. If, if God... Brother Green, I've just now seen you. Good to see you all. Amen. Uh, if he's that big, why ain't he sticking out of us somewhere? There's, there's a fault. That's right. If someone big as God is in you, he'll be showing up somehow Amen. in you, through you. Amen. Amen. That's right. So, we got that nailed down. Salvation will take you somewhere. Where does it take you? Well, number one, it take you to heaven. <laughs> Amen. I'm thankful that the day I got saved, this world ceased to be my home. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. Salvation takes you to heaven. Salvation is the key that opens the door of the kingdom of God. It's the glories of his, that glorious city. Uh, salvation where all believers will go one of these days to heaven. Amen. Salvation takes us there. As a matter of fact, you don't go there unless you're saved. You don't, you don't, you don't go. You know, there, there's, a, there's a saying, a cliche or a saying that says, well, we're all God's children. That's not a true statement. That's not a true statement. All that are saved are God's children. Now, we all creations of God, but we're not all God's children unless we're saved. A lot of folks have testified, they're right. Years I prayed, if God ever let me pastor, it'd be full of kids. The church would be full of kids. I, I, I belong to a church that's full of children. Wow, children. I was, I was the ringleader. God has answered my prayer. I love them. I love them. Most of these kids know now, if I can just get in the preacher's office and whatever I see I want, I know he's going to let me have it. So I don't let them in there. <laughs> Paisley was reaching this morning for them. I got them die-cast model Mach 1's in there, and she was reaching for them. She couldn't reach much longer. She'd had one for a toy.
I love them all, but they're all not my children. I can't, I can say I love them, and they mean the world to me, and I wish they were, but they're not. Folks, the Lord wished the whole world would turn to Him. At least not least well than any parish, but all kind of repentance. But if you don't, you're not His child. Salvation takes you to heaven. Nothing else. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Salvation takes you to heaven. I'm going to heaven because I've been saved. Preacher, that's very simple. Sure it is. Why don't you get saved? I'm not trying to make salvation hard. It was hard for Christ, but it's not hard for us. Salvation takes you to heaven. Let me ask you this. Where else does it take you? It takes you to holiness. See, if... If Jesus just saved you to take you to heaven, He'd have took you to heaven the moment He saved you. Let that sink in. If the only reason Christ saved me and saved you was to take us to heaven, He'd have took us to heaven the moment He saved us. But He, I, I've been saved going on thirty-five years. God saved me as a thirteen-year-old boy. If the only reason He saved me was to take me to heaven, He should have just ushered me on into glory. But He left me here and you here. Some of y'all have been saved that long or longer. Some of you have not been saved as long. But you're still here. Why? He's chosen you to be an ambassador. And you can't be a good ambassador if you're not representing Him well. And that's through holiness. Notice some things with me about that. Of course, we know, the, we know the Word of God. First, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Let me read some verses out of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter number, chapter number 6, verse 9 through 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Salvation changes us, and salvation takes us not only to heaven, but it takes us to holiness. How holy are you? See, one mark of true repentance is a drastically changed life. The fruits of the Spirit will be evident in you. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. What about the fruit of the Spirit? See, holiness, holiness isn't a list of rules that some Pharisee has in their mind that if you ain't doing those things, you're not saved. That, that's, that's not the holiness I'm talking about. See, God's commandments are not grievous. See, Pharisees put more, more on you than God does. And they don't even live it themselves. A lot of Pharisees in this land, even in this day, and I'm not, ta- I'm not preaching against Phariseeism because I'm going to give you a license of sin. God forbid. Everything God said be, we need to be it. But true holiness, true holiness is that, the fruit of the Spirit in your life. That's true holiness. True holiness will make you want to be more like Him instead of like them. True holiness will make you want to look like Him and not like them. True holiness makes you want to live like Him and not like them. But true holiness comes out in our lives, uh, fruits of the Spirit, the love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. You want to see if you're truly holy, the fruit of the Spirit will be there in your life. There will be a difference. 
And I'm not going to take time to turn over there. There's a difference in, a, in, in the work of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit. Of course, we name a bunch of them in the last text. Salvation takes you to holiness. There, is a, there will be a desire to serve God. There will be a desire to look like God. There will be a desire in your heart to love the brethren. There will be a desire in your heart to, 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 to praise God. There will be a desire in your heart to bring honor to God through your own life. It takes you to holiness. True Christianity doesn't applaud sin. True Christianity doesn't, doesn't have a celebration time when sin's been committed. Now we don't have a we don't have a judgmental rally either. There's a medium there. We don't applaud sin. Of course we don't we don't condemn the sinner as far as that goes because they're already condemned. The Bible said they're condemned because they're not believing in the name of the only begotten Son of God. What are we to do? We're to be holy. We're to be humble. We're to be helpful. But if we go to applauding sin, then the sinner's not going to think, well, I guess I'm good. And at the same time, we don't, we don't get in a rage And tell them off. We try to love them. Amen. Try to present the life of Christ. All right, this is wrong. We got to get this right. We, we, let's help. Let's let us help you get this right. Get this on the right track. That's what we're here for. Let's get this. Let's get our lives in the will of God. Salvation leads you to heaven, or takes you to heaven, but it takes you to holiness too. If you have no desire in your heart to be more like Christ and to be holy and to be in God's will and to be faithful, something's missing. Amen. I didn't say we was all hitting the bullseye, but I'm talking about the desire to hit it. Amen. Paul said, I press toward the mark. Paul said, I'm pressing, I'm striving. Paul said, that's my goal. I'm not satisfied out of God's will. I'm not satisfied unfaithful. I'm not satisfied unholy. So I press. I strive to grow. I don't puff up when sin's preached on. I don't puff up when the preacher questions me. I don't puff up when things... Hey, I want to get my life holy. Salvation takes you there. You know, I found out over the years, the one that God has forgiven most, and what I mean by that is their lives was very wretched. They was in, they was in sin neck deep, vile, ungodly, wicked, and God brings them out of that. As a pastor, and, and I've talked to other pastors, those are the ones you can preach, and you'll never hurt their feelings because they see what God's done for them. They realize what God's done in their life, how He's changed their life. As a matter of fact, they, 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 they desire, preach to me. Preach to me. Tell me something. Tell me hard, preacher. Tell me. I want to keep my life right. Straighten me out. I'm just, that's, their, that's their thinking. I want to be right, preacher. I don't want to go back to that, preacher. Now understand, if you're lost, whether you're religious or whether you're that way, you're still going to hell. You've got to get saved. But I'm afraid many times we get self-righteous along the way. And preaching plain hurts feelings. Not enough grace in it, preacher. Not enough love in it, preacher. Well, that's what's, that's what's causing the message. I want to see God's grace and love in your life. And if we tiptoe around the tulip, who wants a doctor that won't talk to you? Who wants a doctor that won't tell you what your problem is? Who wants a doctor that won't actually tell you what your problem is, won't tell you how to fix it? Or what can be done? Who wants a doctor that just says, it'll be all right? 
Here's a hundred dollar. Here's a hundred dollar bill. You go pay that at the front desk. It's okay. I don't want a doctor like that. I don't want a preacher like that either. Oh, it's okay. Let me give you a hug. I love you. It's all right. And I want him to say, hey, you got a problem. This is what we found. This is what's, this is what's causing you not to function. This is what's causing you heartache and it's what's causing you pain. This is what's causing you to, not to be able to, to, to grow. This is what's causing you not to be able to, to have the energy. You need. This, is what, this is your problem. This is what you need to stop doing. This is what you need to start doing and things will pick up. Here's your prescription. If you take it, it'll help you. If you don't, then, then it's not going to help you. And not one of us leaves mad at the doctor. If I leave mad at the doctor, it's because he didn't tell me nothing. He had, didn't care. He didn't try. He didn't even put forth an effort. He just, I don't like doctors like that. But preacher, some of them just don't have a bedside manner. I know. Them's kinds of ones I like. You're fat and you need to lose weight. <laughs> you know what? That, 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 that hurts my feelings. But you know what I have to say? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. What are you going to do? What are you going to prescribe? <laughs> Here's what you need to do. Here's what you need to do. Now, I got a choice to accept it or not. But I've never left out of there and said, I can't stand that man. He because I know he's right. You know he's right. Would you want a preacher any different? Salvation should take you to holiness. And if it's not, something's missing. Something's out of order. Something's wrong. Notice next, next I, I got to hurry. Not only... Well, salvation take you to heaven, salvation take you to holiness, salvation take you to the harvest. Sharing the gospel is a mark of genuine salvation. Amen. Jesus told the disciples, the apostles in Acts 1 8, ye shall be witnesses unto me. Jesus never called us to be lazy, but he called us to be lights. Get all that. Jesus never called us to be lazy, he called us to be lights. Every Christian is a witness either for or against Jesus. Which are you? Every Christian here, you're a witness for Him or against Him. Every one of us. Every Christian here, you either, you either show forth Christ or you don't. Amen. Then lastly, salvation will take you to the house of God. And I've already about preached that one. I don't know how much I've preached this nor quoted this verse in the last almost 26 years. Preach, I'm sick of hearing it. Well, when everybody starts practicing it, maybe I'll move on. Forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. I don't want to be in that crowd as the manner of some is. That's negative. Forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together as the matter, you want to be that crowd as the, as the matter of some is? As the matter of some is? That's, that's my crowd. I, I'm with the as the matter of some is. Won't well, I get you a bumper sticker pulling your car? I'm as the matter of some is. Who wants to be a part of that crowd? I don't, I don't want God to say, as the matter of some is, there he goes. Hmm? I found out most Christians do what they want to do. They'll sacrifice what they want to sacrifice for. They, hey, they'll go through a little hardship for what they want to go through a little hardship for. They'll discomfort themselves for what they want to be discomforted for. Amen. There's more excuses for not being faithful to church than reasons. Right. Forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but so much the more as you see the day approaching. 
Who, who would disagree with me that we are in the last of the last days? Who would say, Preacher, I do not believe that? Well, none of us would say that. If you don't, you, you've been living in a cave. But the Bible says, But, Preacher, I don't know if it's going through my butt, but as the matter, but so much the more as you see the day approaching, the day of the Lord, the day of His coming, and I see it so much more every day. So I need to go to church more. I taught a Bible college class Monday, went to church Wednesday, went to church Thursday, went to church Friday, and I'm back here today. I love church. I'd rather be in church anywhere I know. I desire to be in church. I desire to hear the Word of God. I desire to be fed. I desire to be around God's people. I desire just to obey God. Amen. Salvation take you somewhere. Where's your salvation taking you? Is it going to take you to heaven? Only if you trusted Christ and Him alone. Is it taking you to holiness? Are you getting closer to God, more like Him? Is it taking you to harvest? How's your witness? You're light or you're lazy? To take you to the house of God. See, even Jesus, his custom was he went to the temple on the Sabbath day. His custom was. Well, I'm not don't want to go out of habit. His custom was. Sabbath day was the day they went. But as we get closer to the day of the Lord, he said, so much the more. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Amen. Revivals, anytime we can get in. Amen. Amen. Where's your salvation taking you? Let's all stand. Miss Lisa's coming. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, the altar is open. Thank you for your patience, church. I love you. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. No one's looking on but me and the Lord. These folks are coming. Our folks are coming. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. No one's looking on but me and the Lord. Church, I love you and appreciate you. Thank God for you. Folks are coming to the altar. What about you? Maybe you're here this morning and you say, Preacher, I've never been saved. Preacher, if I died right now, I don't know if I'd go to heaven. Would you pray for me, Preacher? Are they one? Preacher, I'm not sure I'm saved. Would you slip your hand up quickly, preacher? Would you pray for me? If I died right now, I don't know if I'd go to heaven. If you're here today and you know without a shadow of a doubt you're going to heaven through Christ alone, can I see your hand? If you know that you know that you know, thank you. If you couldn't raise your hand today, I wish you'd come. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, preacher, I'm saved, but I'm not, I'm not walking right, not living right. Preacher, I need prayer. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. God bless you. I see you. Thank you. Thank you, son. I see you. Anybody else? Preacher, would you pray for me? I'm not, I'm not walking in the way I ought to walk, not living holy. Preacher, would you pray for me?